Okay, um, let's bring that Technicolor cheese wedge down. And let's talk to the Sheiks of Neptune. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey! hey. We, we have Brain and Dick with us from the Sheiks of Neptune. Both right. of us. Both of you, yes. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining me um, on the, 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 the live stream pre-record thing for a Thursday night. I really do appreciate that. Um, how are things going out there in Vegas? Fantastic. I have no complaints, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything's shut down, but that just means more time at home with the cats. Yeah, it's been so great. a whole lot of the same. <laughs> yeah, that's been the really curious thing for us is uh, we get to spend like every evening with our rats. And I'm a little concerned if we ever do get back out on the road, what that's going to look like. More rats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess uh, seriously, we have been pretty productive in yeah. the downtime. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we had our, the, the latest album came out in the middle of it. And so instead of waiting it, we just put it out there for anyone who wanted, which was nice. And then since we're not doing any shows, hell, we just started working on the next yep, album. We're already halfway done. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's, yeah. I mean, that's the key, right? Is to figure out how, while you're locked indoors, how you can be productive and how you can move, you know, your art forward. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been very nice. Uh, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Where do, okay, so let's back up a little bit. And what was the inspiration for the Sheiks of Neptune? Um, so I guess that was mostly me, I think. Yeah. And it was literally, I mean, all the things in my life all come around. But I, I woke up in the middle of the night, like 3 a.m., and I just had this in my brain, Sheiks of Neptune. We were already kind of coming out of another band. Mm -hmm. We talked about, ah, we should keep doing a project. We worked well together, something fun. And just one night I woke up and it was just in my brain, Sheiks of Neptune, just like in be a completely self-indulgent project. Every little nook and cranny of things that we liked, that's what we're going to throw in. And whatever comes out, comes out. Yeah. And then um, I think I told you about it the next day, actually. We were met up at a Frankie's Tiki Room here in Las Vegas. Fantastic little place. And I was drunk out of my mind on Fink Bombs. Yeah. And I was just like, Brain, I've got the best idea for our project. We're going to be the Sheiks of Jupiter. And, uh, and I'm like, wait, wait, no, no, no. That came out drunk. Sheiks of Neptune. And yeah. then Sheiks of Neptune ever For whatever since. reason, Sheiks of Jupiter was awful. I didn't like that. Yeah, I think it was... <laughs> Yeah, it was the extra syllable. It's a horrible, horrible idea. Yeah. But I mean, when we're recording, you always yell at me if I throw an extra syllable anyway. Yeah, oh, so, man. you know, him and his syllables. But uh, it, it's it's nice, though. We get we pretty much do whatever we want to in the studio. We're really lucky at that. And the fact that other people like it is just a bonus. We really, uh, that's not really what we're in it for. But man, it's it's awesome that other people enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, we love, you know, your classic sci-fi horror movies we love the exploitation movies of the 70s so all that stuff from film we, you know really ties into everything we do and we love yeah we're different big into soundtracks and you know all all those big movie scores and stuff and it really helps out yeah. and also i was tired of being a band that just played one style of music i get bored so fast. really easy so it's like i didn't want to be in just a surf rock band or just a punk band or just a metal band or whatever because that's very limiting to me I enjoy more that I can focus on telling a story and then pick the musical style that's going to move that story in the right direction and tell that story. Yeah, I can definitely relate to the not wanting to get uh, constricted by your your genres or your themes. So right now you guys are on, this is your third album release that you just, yeah. just put out? So you're already, yep. already halfway through your fourth album. Yeah, yes. What yeah. have you seen change as your growth through these the series? Uh it, it's kind of it's kind of nice like the first album we were really getting our feet wet. We didn't know what we were doing. Uh like and, we know what we're doing now. We don't know what we're doing now. I was uh. getting to that. <laughs> um and it, it's just it's really weird like I think whenever we just lay something down uh, it's just what comes out. And I, I think it's just where we are at that time. And I mean it's it's been a very short time span. It's only been 5 years for the these three albums. And, um, I feel like they're cohesive, but they're just different as well. Um, our production values definitely gotten incredibly nice. Our, our buddy Drew's recorded all four, all three and a half albums now. Um, and he has just treated us so well and he's, uh, really helped along the process, but, uh, you can probably answer that better than my rambling ass. Yeah. So I, I, I know for me, when I'm working on new songs, it's not like I'm specifically trying to be different. 
Like, I, I don't want to, like, okay, this album's got to sound different than the last one. Honestly, I really don't care. I just want to, like, make something that I'm having fun with. I think the fact that I get bored with things so easily, I inadvertently just come up to want to try something new and want to try something different yeah. and tell a different story. So it's not like my goal isn't to make an album. This album has to sound different. Ah, you know, honestly, like, if I was in that same mood writing the next album, it might sound the same. Who knows? I mean, this one yeah. really, the th fourth one we're writing, it's not that far from the third one. So maybe it will sound similar. Yeah. And that's that's fine. I really care more more about telling the story and the mood I'm in at that point. Yeah, I can totally see that. And in listening to the the third album um, that you guys sent out to me recently, uh, the, the 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 engineer on engineering on that was phenomenal. But it I, doesn't feel it doesn't feel separated from your first album, which I think is is really interesting because you you guys are kind of you know you you pull a lot of interest. Although in all honesty. Once I, the first time I met you, I realized you were my kind of weird. So uh, <laughs> it might just be my biases that this seems perfectly reasonable to have all of these influences sort of, you know, coming together. Yeah. But I, yeah, it seems weird to us, but yeah, we, yeah, it's definitely weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I find it really interesting that you, um, you kind of come from this, what I would say, this sci fi surf punk uh, sound, and it is evolved sonically. But it's still somehow true to this this abstract collection of of genres. Yeah, I think we're really just limited to ourselves, and uh, it, it's really nice that uh, just whatever we pull in, uh, that's just what happens, and it, it's working out well. I think. You know, I, I think there is one thing for consistency that we do. We always make sure we follow the rule of the butt, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, that's true. The rule of the butt is really important. It's, it's after we write something and we're listening to it back. If, if our butt's shaking. If it's got that groove, then we're good. I mean, it's got to have the butt rule. If we play something if you're back, you're forcing your butt into it. No, it's not. It's, it's not going to be good. Yeah. So I mean, if it doesn't make us move and dance, I, it's probably not going to work for anybody else. So that's kind of the thing. So I, I think there is a bit of groove on every one of the albums. Mm -hmm. There is a bit of you know moving along with it, even in the weird parts. Yeah. <laughs> Now, for the people who haven't seen you live or watched any of your videos, you have a hell of a live show with lots of props, lot, lots of fun costumes, lots of audience participation and interactions. Where does that come from? Does it come from the music? Does that lead you in the music? Like, did you envision yourself being that theatrical of an act before writing the music? Or is that something that's coming from your inspirations? Uh, yes and no. I think for me, uh, this is a band that I've always wanted to see live, uh, and I'll never get to see us live, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's, it's more of just, again, entertaining ourselves. Uh, it, it, we're, we're just up there entertaining ourselves. Uh, uh, it might sound selfish because it is, uh, the props and the costumes come from like, uh, we just, it, it's, it's fun for us. And I mean, the music helps, I think. Uh, it helps bring the props and costumes kind of to life and make it a lot more fun and and uh, make sense, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the crowd participation, that's because, man, we just like to mess with people. And mm -hmm. <laughs> whether they want it or not, it's it's a blast, and they, they seem to enjoy it. I, for me, again, I think part of it is that I get bored really easy, and I just don't want to be – I couldn't be the guy that was up there just singing a song. That's boring to me. Like, I get – Okay, I'm bored after the first song. I got to move around. I've got to engage in people. I mean, I can sing by myself at my house. You know, uh, and yeah, messing with people is fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting messed with by people oh, is yeah. fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I, I mean, I really try to, in my antics, be very inviting. I want them to be a part of it. I just don't want it to be an us and them kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I like to get out there. I mean, I paid for it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I broke my ankle last year and, you know, was down and out for a while. Um, but, you know, it's fun. I mean, I'm, uh, it's not going to stop. I'm looking forward. I mean, we definitely have things planned for once this album comes out. But I don't know, when writing the songs, though, I'm not even thinking about the live show, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, uh, no, all that they, comes they seem, afterwards. Yeah, they seem very separate in my head. It's weird. The way I explain it to people is, like, I feel like we're our own cover band because by the time we get to play our songs live, it's like we we just get to have fun with it, and we're playing somebody else's stuff at that point. It's I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, it's it's like being in your own cover band. It's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before the uh, before this whole shutdown thing happened, 
Um, I'm assuming you guys had some plans going on for concerts, for uh, you know, other tours, anything that you had lined up that sort of fell apart yeah. on you? We had a worldwide arena tour. They were all sold out. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, we'll just have to, probably going to have to go back to dive bars once the thing blows over. But that's okay. You win some, you lose some. Um, but uh, we were kind of starting to slow down because the album was getting to be finished. So we were kind of getting into the preparation mode of coming yeah. back out with a new album, getting ready for a CD release. So it was almost good timing. I mean, for lack of a better term. Uh, but we were about to slow down right then. Anyway, we would yeah. definitely be playing over the summer, which I really miss, but, uh, it just gives us more time to, yeah. Uh, and cause in actuality, I know our live show gets crazy and it's fun for us, but in order to be able to do that, well, you have to be, I mean, we're perfectionists when it comes to practicing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got to have it hands down so that we can get crazy and not think about it on stage. So we were actually in the mode of, not booking any shows, going to get all the material down. Practice. That's going to take a good yeah, three well. months to really do it well and then book shows from there. When we did our second album, we actually booked our release show before we had practiced everything. And it took us longer to do that than what we wanted. It was really right up to the nose of that show to be uncomfortable with that material. We didn't want to do that again. We want to make sure that it's perfect in our eyes before we even Before we show. go up there and mess it up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your, your live gigs are a hell of an event. Um, I, I've loved every show that I've been at at every tiny little CD club. I would love to see one of your bigger shows in Vegas. Uh, that was my dream to try to pull that off this year. So apparently we'll have to wait a little while before we get to head out to Vegas. There's already talk among the uh, Patreon members of maybe scheduling a whole trip to Vegas uh, after this whole thing is uh, washes over so that we can all... Uh, you know, be in one place and see the whole thing when it comes out. Yeah, you know, we well, can, we we'll, maybe we can, uh, you know, side by side kind of plan that. We'll make sure that something's happening. Yeah, we could definitely do that. That would be a blast. Okay, one uh, final obnoxious question, and then we can let you guys go. Um, let's see if I can get it to. Uh, there we go. If Tower Records was still a thing. Which genre would your albums be slotted into? Local music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Bonus question. <laughs> when your album is displayed on an end cap, what bands would you want to be next to you on that end cap? Um, Martin Denny. I, I would, I'm going to go Rush. Rush. Still love Rush. Um, uh, Inya. Oh, good call. Yeah. Uh, I Vangelis. I love Vangelis. Bjork. Oh, yeah. Um, John Williams? John Williams. It seems reasonable. Yeah, so, you know, anybody buying our album is going to be really mad, and it would be <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, well, I do want to point out, if anyone is interested in getting your albums, it's sheiksofneptune.bandcamp.com? Yes. Yeah, no underscores, no nothing. Uh, E-I... Yes. I before E, except for in Sheiks. Um, yeah, sheiksandneptune.com. No, sheiksandneptune.bandcamp.com. That is the only place to get the new album. I've been very selfish in hanging on to that myself, and uh, that's the only place you can listen to it right now. Also, there are more songs on the Bandcamp than you will find on Spotify and iTunes, including a uh, Dolly Parton cover and a Broadway cover that I didn't feel like paying for the rights for. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and if you want physical copies, because you feel like you need to have the old school CD, I listen to CDs. That is the best way to listen to music. So if you want to go that way, just uh, message us on Facebook. We'll hook something up. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're no stranger to snail mail. We will gladly oblige. Awesome. Well, I want to let you guys go get back to work on the new album. Thank you so much. Um, oh, I accidentally sent you guys away. There we go. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to you know, Skype in today. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll hopefully see you all live very soon yeah. and online. Thank you for everything. Absolutely. It's fantastic. If you guys, I mean, you, all you guys know, but th this guy right here yeah. who I'm pointing to, who looks like I'm just pointing at, who's listening, <laughs> but man, oh man, he's been a great supporter, always been the best. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much, guys. We will see you later online. Yep. Thank you. Send it up. All right. Cool. Well, uh, 
That is an interview, so let's see. We will uh, cut this thing off, and boom.